Hi ladies and gentlemen and welcome to IT Snippets. Today I'm going to show you how to manage your multimedia collection, mainly your movies and series, using a program called The Renamer to help you with tagging things correctly when you open them inside your Plex or XBMC media server. First of all we have to go grab that software, so let's move across to my browser, in my case Opera, and continue. When you open up Opera, you go to www.therenamer.com. It's right there on the front page, and the latest build version is 7.69. You would download that by clicking on the link, and then install it like any other Windows application. Once it's been installed, you down your start bar, scroll all the way down to the renamer, and open it up. Now the Renamer has two modes. You have Movies mode, and if you click on Movies, you have TV Shows mode. I'm going to show you both today. So I've got a folder here of sample movies and series. I'll we'll double click that and open that up. Just pull that into the correct monitor for you. And with this program for TV shows, it's quite simple. If you go to Series the Renamer, if you look inside the series that I've got here as an example, Everything's got dots in it, it's S9, S10. It's like it's picked up the series numbers rather than the actual episode numbers. So let's see if this can resolve that for us. So drag that, just click the folder and drag it into TV shows. And as you can see right away, it has changed it to Trailer Park Boys, Season 5, Episode 1. Give Peace a chance. However, as you can see, it is not quite perfect because there's a dot there separating it and there's a minus there separating it. However, it has cleaned the rest of them up and this would be enough for Plex to actually understand it correctly and to use it. So in order to rename these files, we just simply click Proceed and then give it a moment to run through. It's very quick with these. Then click New. And if we go back to our folder here, we can see that they have been renamed as we expected. Now, for movies, it's slightly different. I've got three movies here as an example. Before you do any movies in this, you have to set two settings. So click on the settings. Inside the Fetch folder, you have to put a folder name. Now don't click on Browse, because if you click on Browse, it crashes. Now I just use my folder name, the TV show archive name, to be the same. Just click Save. It says Save's Complete. Click Save again for the bottom one. And Save's Complete. Okay, we can close that for now. Switch over to Movies. As you can see, it keeps the fetch folders there for us. Close that. Select our movies, or indeed we can even select the folder. And just drag it in. And drop it on. Now what this also does, is it looks for files that are not required for your media center, and it marks them for deletion. If we go inside here, we should have The Fate of the Furious, which is here, the finest, which is there, and Trespass, which is there. <clears throat> now, as you can see at the moment, all it's doing is renaming it to the name of the movie, whereas a lot of media centers these days, including Plex and XBMC, also would prefer it if it had the year in there. So I'm going to cancel that for now. Let's see if we can change that a bit, shall we? We'll go into settings and we just change show year in folder and in file. Simply right there. And then we can close that again and then drag our movies back in again. Now what we can also do in here if we wish, once this is reprocessed these, 
You can see it's now adding the year at the end of the movie. Now these dot thirty sevens and dot thirty eights are irrelevant, and SFVs are pretty much irrelevant to not necessarily from the download, but from our media center perspective. So we can actually cancel this again, go to settings again, and inside here. We're looking to get rid of .sfv. So we just put space, quotes, sfv, quotes again, then close. And then drag them back in. Now obviously, you would normally just have to do this once. I'm only doing this to show you how you can make little changes. There you go, it's now deleting more files. Now if I click proceed, it renamed 5 and it skipped 5. So, let's go see how the renaming went. The folders have been renamed correctly. And these two files are not required so I can delete them. But that's been renamed correctly. That's renamed correctly. And that is renamed correctly. So that's how easy it is to actually rename large collections. And this software, although it's a little bit buggy, is actually completely free. Which is probably why people kind of put up with the little quirks of it. For example, I'll just crash it just now just to show you. If I go to settings and I go to browse, that's it, it's crashed. There's a crash window. So it does have its issues, but it works as long as you're careful with how you give it the information. If you like this video, give it a like. If you dislike this video, give it a dislike too. If you get feedback in this or any other videos or suggestions for videos you believe we should do in the future, then please let us know in the comments below. And most of all, thank you for watching.